Hey my quilty friends, do you love buying Moda's mini charm packs but then have no idea what you're going to make with them? Well in today's tutorial I've got a really cute way of using them up making this really easy zippered pouch. Now I know some of you don't like zips but trust me they're so easy. Let me show you how. You can find a copy of these cutting instructions over on my website. I'll put a link in the description below. So to make our little zipper pouch, we're going to take our cute little mini charm packs that measure two and a half inches by two and a half inches and arrange them. Now you might just want to cut your squares, but I'm trying to use up some of these charm packs. So that's what I'm doing here. Now what we're doing is we're laying them five across and three down, and we need two sets of these. So one for the front, one for the back of our pouch. What I'm going to do is sew these together with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm not going to show you how I do that because otherwise I make these videos way too long, but I'm going to sew these together and then I'll meet you back here. So I just wanted to let you know I'm stitching with a quarter inch seam allowance with my stitch length at two and I am using wonderful confetti thread. So like I said, I've used the chain piecing method to sew them all together. I'm just going to cut my thread so that it's easier to press right now. Okay, so now I've got my three rows. Now I'm just going to press my seam so that the top and the bottom row are going towards my right and the middle row are going to my left so that I can nest them easily. So because this is just a little pouch, I'm just going to be brutal and just run my iron across them like that. We don't need to worry too much about setting seams and making sure it's all perfect for a zipper pouch. Just giving it a press on the top. So those seams are all going that way. And now I'm just going to make sure these seams are going this way. Okay, now we're going to nest those seams and sew this together so we've got our full complete side. Now let's sew our rows together. I'm just going to take the top one, place it onto the second one and nest those seams. So where we've got seams folded over and pressed this way and then folded over and pressed this way, I'm going to butt them up against each other so they can't go any further and that's called nesting. I like to open it up and check I'm creating a nice straight line and when I'm happy I'll pop a pin in to keep it in place. Find the next lot of seams. Making sure I'm lining up these top edges as well. Okay, we've got four in total. And then if you'd like to, you could just pop a pin in at the beginning and the end, just to make sure they're all in place. Then what I'll do is I'll sew along this edge and then I'll do exactly the same to sew on that last row. So starting just before the very edge, removing my pins as I need to. And then when I come up to the seams, I'm just making sure that I'm sewing them down in the direction that they were pressed so that it's going to sit really nice and flat. last row on and just making sure I've got the row well just making sure I'm attaching the row in the right direction so that looks good to me nesting those seams pinning and sewing so now what I'm going to do is just make sure all those seams are pressed upwards it doesn't really matter at this point and I'm just going to do it quite roughly like I said this is not a quilt it's just a small pouch we don't have to be perfect for this okay and just giving it a once over so it's all sitting nice and flat so I've got my Palon single-sided fusible fleece here it measures around 10 and a half inches by six and a half inches and I've got the bumpy side facing me the bumpy side that's the glue then I'm going to take my piece that we just sewed and place it right on top do my best to smooth it out and then I'm going to use my iron to adhere it to my fleece 
And this is just going to give our little pouch a little bit of body and help it stay upright. So it just needs a few moments on every position or every part of our fabric just so it can melt that glue. And then we can just turn it over and just give it a once over on the back. You can see that it's it was a little bit short on here, but that's going to be fine because the, the bulk of it is covered with our fusible fleece. So now I'm just going to trim it up so that it does in fact measure 10 and a half inches by six and a half inches. So I'm just going to trim this raw edge here and I'm going to line up a line on my ruler on the seam so I know that it's nice and straight. And then I'm going to line up the edge on my mat here and just check that it is measuring 10 and a half inches. And there's a little bit of excess we can cut off there. And then I'll do the same on the other side so that it measures six and a half inches. So make two pieces, so we've got our front and back, we've got five charms going across, three coming down, we've sewn them together, we've put on our fusible fleece and we've just cut them down so that they measure six and a half inches by ten and a half inches. Let's move on to the zipper. I forgot to mention that if you did want to quilt your pieces, it would be best to do that before we square it up at six and a half inches by ten and a half inches. I do like mine quilted, so I'm just going to quickly go back and do that step on my piece now. I'm just going to quickly do a stitch in the ditch along all my seams and I'll have a stitch length of around three. So for the zipper ends we've got two pieces that measure three and three quarter inches by one and a half inches and then what we're going to do is place them wrong sides together well, sorry, we're going to fold them in half so the wrong sides are together and then we're just going to press on both pieces. Then what we're going to do is just open that up and fold it down about a quarter inch just by eye on both sides. And then fold it back in half and just give that a press. And I'll repeat that for this one, opening it up. There's a little bit fiddly, folding it over about a quarter of an inch on both sides, and then pressing it shut again. Okay, so now let's move on to the next step. So I'm using a continuous zipper here, which just means I buy it by the yard and then cut them down to size. The size zipper we need is around eight and a half inches, but we want it a bit longer so we don't have to use that little end cap if you've got one of those types of zippers on it. And we can just get rid of everything and just have the plain zipper within our zipper pouch. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the first end, open up the little tabs we pressed and place the zipper in on the center. So I'm lining it up on either edge just by eye. We're going to trim this excess off, so don't worry too much. But I do want it to just come past the edge that we folded over there. So in other words, it's just slightly more than a quarter inch in from the folded end that we pressed. Then when I know it's all in place, I will just pop a pin on either side to keep it in place. Now some people think zippers are scary, they're really not, you just have to sew your first zipper and then you'll know that they're really easy and nothing to be scared of. So what I'm going to do is just line it up with my pouch front or back, just so we know we're, we're, we're making it the right size. So I'm just going to place it there, I'm just going to pull my zipper down a little bit, and then what we want to do is the same thing on this size side, so I'm just going to line that up there. And then I want to cut my zipper so it comes just a quarter inch part, well, sorry, so it comes just past this quarter inch fold where we did. So I need to cut it a, right about here, and that actually measures around eight and a half inches. So just trimming my zipper, and actually those scissors probably aren't strong enough, I need to get my bigger scissors just to get through the zipper. 
here we go now you better to cut it slightly longer than too short I'm just going to trim that and then we can just check it so like I said cut it a bit longer than too short at first if you're a little bit nervous to cut that but just lifting up my zipper tab and opening it up and popping it in and actually that's perfect so you can see that if I line up the edge of my zipper tab on the edge of my pouch here it's all lined up nicely and then if I open it up it's coming just past that fold so that's about perfect I'll just fold that over again remembering that this side should also be lined up and then I'll just pop in a couple of pins whoop it's opened up making sure that I've got those zipper teeth right as close as I can get them we can even pop a pin in right next door to it to kind of force it closed I could move that pin over so we're really forcing them closed if you wanted to you could even run a few stitches over there just to keep it closed while you're trying to pin it all in place so can you see what I've done there I've cut my zipper approximately eight and a half inches so it fits in within my tabs that are lined up with the edge of my pouch and they're just lining up where we folded over our tab just past that quarter inch and the reason we do that is because we don't want any of the bulk in the side of our pouch when we turn it right sides out so now all I'm going to do is sew along this edge securing these little tabs here now I'm not going to worry about a back stitch because we are going to trim this excess off I'm going to start on the very edge and I'm going to stitch about one eighth of an inch away from my edge there but I do want to make sure I'm catching all the layers so we can check that once we've sewn so just stitching across there making sure that zipper is closed there we don't want it open coming right over and past it and do so slowly over that zipper then I'll just do exactly the same on this side I'm still stitching at stitch length too so it's nice and close together and which makes it nice and strong and there you can see we've attached the zipper to these little end pieces and that looks good to me if you some perhaps miss them you could even just do another layer of stitching which would just make it extra strong now I just want to cut the excess off our little ends here so I'm just going to take my roller line it up on the edge of my zipper and just trim it doesn't have to be perfect this just makes it a little bit easier when we're sewing it onto our zipper pouch move that zip out of the way we'll just do this on all four sides okay let's sew our zipper pouch together so taking one of our main pieces we want it so the fabric is facing in the right direction if you've got directional fabric then I'm going to take my zipper and face it right sides together so we've got the wrong side of the zipper facing me and then we're going to take our lining fabric and then face that right sides to our outer pouch piece there so just placing them all on top of each other then what we need to do is make sure all these edges are lined up nicely so I'm just going to turn that around so I can check and then once we're happy that we've got all the layers lined up we're just going to pop some clips in I prefer to use clips when I'm making pouches I'll put one clip on at that end and then another clip on at this end and we just want all those edges lined up really nicely particularly the top then I'm going to make sure all three layers are lined up and then carry on clipping as many clips as I would like Now I've got my zipper right there what I'm going to do is just lift this up and pull my zipper down a bit and then what I'll do is I'll start sewing along there then when I've come along a little bit I'll stop and then I'll move my zipper back up and then carry on that's just how we work around our zipper pull that can get in the way a little bit okay let's sew that together I've got my dookie hinge zipper foot on my sewing machine now this is a foot I like to do when I'm doing zippers use whatever zipper foot you've got and then we want to sew up quite close to our zipper 
and for me I've got my hinge zipper foot on and then I also know that I line up this edge along my quarter inch mark on my foot plate there so I've lowered my stitch down to a, a two so it's nice and compact and it's going to make it nice and secure I will do a back stitch we don't want this coming undone and then I'm just going to sew along that whole edge moving that zipper when I get to it just take your time there's no rush and we don't want any of these layers moving as we're sewing them now I can feel my zipper right here and I've sewn enough to move that now so I'm going to make sure my needles down lift my foot up put my hand in between the two layers grab that zipper and just move it to the back put my foot back down and now I'll carry on till the end When I get to the end I will just do a back stitch again. Now at this point I do like to press quickly. So what we're going to do is open it up and press that top seam down. I'm going to give it a finger press and then press. Now some people just finger press this step but I don't know I'm a bit of an iron nut and I do like to use my iron. Then on the back here we're going to finger press that down. Make sure that's all sitting really nicely and press that too. Like I said, this step is optional. I just think we get a nicer finish. Now what we're gonna do is do a top stitch along this edge. Okay, so we're going to be stitching at about 1 8 of an inch from our seam, just along the edge here, creating a top stitch, which is decorative. So when I'm doing a decorative stitch, I like to stitch at stitch length three. I'm gonna start on the very edge. I'm still using my hinge zipper foot. Use whatever foot you need to and I'm just going to sew along that edge and because it is decorative I do like to take my time so it's nice and straight coming off the very edge now let's attach the second side so taking our second piece making sure it's facing the right way up if you're using directional fabric then I'm going to place the piece down onto it with the right sides facing each other that we just sewed with the zip in it. Then again, we wanna line up all those edges. Then I'm going to take my lining fabric, again, placing it right sides together. So we've got our three layers again. We wanna line up all these edges and these side edges. And when we're happy, we're gonna clip them in place. So I like to start at the beginning. And then at the end, Then I'll come into the center and just use as many clips as you'd like to. You can also use pins. I just find clips. I, I just prefer to use clips when I'm making zipper pouches. Okay, now we're just going to sew along that edge just like we did the first. I've put the stitch length back down to two. I'm starting on that very edge. I will go forward a couple of stitches and then do a back stitch. And then I'll just carry on sewing along this edge and then moving that zipper out of the way when I come to it. And the back stitch at the end. Now let's give that a press. Doing exactly the same by lifting this up, finger pressing and pressing. And then on the other side. Now we'll do our top stitch again. So my stitch length is back up to three and I'm just going to sew along that edge again, doing my top stitch. Okay, that's our zipper and that wasn't so hard, was it? Now let's move on to the next step. So for this next step, make sure your zipper is at least halfway open. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to turn it right sides out when we get to that end bit. But what we're going to do is place the two outer fabrics right sides together and the two lining fabrics right sides together. So there's our lining fabric, there's our outer pouch fabric. And what we want to do is clip that all in place. But what I like to do is start in the middle here. So where I've got that zipper end, I want to push that in 
and then where we've got our top stitches where our outer fabric is folded over and down and we've got our top stitch I want to line them up really nicely so I'm going to do my best of opening that up and checking that they are lining up nicely got that big thread in the way and when I'm happy I'm going to pop a clip in right there to keep them in place and then what I'm going to do is come over to the other side and do exactly the same Hang on, just flip that around the right way so I'm going to push that zipper end in line up those edges where we did our top stitch make sure these edges are also lined up nicely and when I'm happy I'll pop a clip in there now what we can do is clip the rest of our zipper pouch into place always like to start in the corners actually I'll put that on the side there along this bottom everything's lined up nicely and along along the sides of course Now something I do like to do is I like to start right here at the most critical part of our zipper pouch so along and down and then stop just past again that most critical part of our zipper pouch and then when I know I'm happy with how that's all worked out then I'll sew the lining. It's a personal preference but when we do sew the lining just remember we need to leave an opening of at least four or five inches otherwise I just find it's way too hard to turn it right sides out. So I'm going to start off by sewing this first part, checking it, and then I'll sew my lining. So I've put my quarter inch foot back on and I'm stitching at stitch length too so it's nice and compact and I'm just going to start right on that join there. I'm not going to write about a back stitch because we're going to come back over and sew the lining down and if we know we're happy then we can secure it down then. I'm coming down to, to the corner and just doing my best guess at a quarter inch seam allowance and turning it doesn't matter too much because we are going to be cutting those corners off to get our box shape. So now what we can do is open it up and just fold this over and just check we're happy with how this join is and that looks that looks fine to me it's just ever so slightly off but I can live with that and I'll move on but if you can't move on what you could do is just unpick some of those stitches and just fiddle around with it until you're really happy with it then we're just going to bring our lining back down line up all those edges clip and sew and remembering you don't have to do do it like this you could just sew around the entire edge remembering to leave your open in one go if you'd like to so just clipping you could use pins for this bit if you'd like because it is just two layers of fabric so now we're just going to sew along our lining edge remembering we need to have an opening of about four inches so we can turn it right sides out so starting a little bit before where we started because we want those stitches really secure I'll just go forward a couple of stitches and then back a few stitches and then carry along the edge again with that quarter inch seam allowance just doing my best guess at a quarter inch turn right there it doesn't matter so much because we are going to be cutting off those corners and if anything I'm being a little bit generous on the lining so that I don't have too much fabric in the lining so just stopping there I'm going to move down I'm just going to guess around four inches if anything you'd want it to be more than four then less than four otherwise it's too hard to turn right sides out I'll do a back stitch because when we turn it right sides out it tends to pull at our stitches so it's I prefer to do a back stitch there coming back up to where we started and I'm going to go right over the top and do a back stitch again cutting my thread now we're going to do our corners so now on all four corners we want to measure a one inch square so what I'll do is I'll take my ruler line up one inch line on the edge of my pouch here on the top and the bottom and then I'm going to draw a line there so I'm measuring that one inch square on the bottom just like that I'll do the same on this side so we're lining it up to the edge of our pouch 
and I'll do the same on the lining. So now I'm just going to cut the squares that I drew. I like to do this with scissors so you can cut it really accurately. And if you've got blunt scissors, it tends to happen at, right at the tips. So that's how you know if your scissors are nice and sharp, is that they will cut really nicely on those corners. Oh, we're going through a few layers there. So now for each of the corners, I'm going to grab each of the sides of my pouch and open it up, which creates a nice straight line there. I'm going to make sure that those seams are lined up nicely. And I find it easier at this point to nest those seams. So again, we've got fabric folded over this way, fabric folded over this way, and I'm just butting them up against each other. And then when I'm happy that it's all lined up nicely, including this edge, I will just pop some clips in. And I'll do that on all four corners. Okay, let's sew again. So I'm still stitching at stitch length two. I'm using my quarter inch foot and I will do a back stitch to make it really nice and secure. So I'll go forward a couple of stitches and then back. And then when I come to the very edge, I'll do another couple of back stitches there so it's nice and secure. I'll repeat that for all four corners. If you're enjoying this video, please do subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss out on another video. It really helps me out and I appreciate it so much. So finding my opening, popping my hand in through that opening and I like to grab the corners now. I'm going to push that right through nicely. And then we pull that through and then when I've still got my opening there, I will just make sure those corners are sitting really nicely and if you'd like to, you can use a point turner um, or else something sharp, well not sharp, pointy but blunt so you don't accidentally poke a hole in your pouch. I do think if you don't have one, they're a great investment. And then I'm just going to make sure it's sitting really nicely right here at the, at the zipper ends. And that's looking really cute. We just have one more thing and that's to pull the lining through. And what we want to do is fold it in about a quarter inch because that was our seam allowance. And then we would just want to sew this close. So I'm just going to pull at it at both sides, which kind of makes it sit really nice like that. And I will just pop a couple of clips in. What you can do is put one where you need to start and where you need to finish and one in the center. And we'll just close that off. So I'm sewing now with about a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm still at stitch length two. I'll go forward a few stitches and then back just to secure it. And all we're doing now is closing up that opening. I know where to stop because I put my clip there. I'll just go a little bit past that, do a back stitch, cut my thread, and we're done. Trim any loose threads so it's nice and tidy. And then we're going to push that lining back in. Remembering when you're sewing your lining, you could make that seam allowance even smaller if you don't want too much of the fabric puckered inside, if you want it a little more tight and compact in there. But that's our little zipper pouch. Now what I like to do is fold it down like that. So we're kind of creasing the bottom piece and folding it down. And I do just give it a quick press so it's sitting really nicely. And then I'll just give it a press so that my fabric's looking all nice and smooth and it's looking the best it can look. And then we have our little pouch. Isn't that just so cute? 
If you've got other ideas on tutorials for me to use up those motor charm packs, leave some ideas down in the comments below. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos. And if you liked this video and you'd like to keep trying more pouches with zippers, maybe check out my vinyl zipper pouch. I'll put the link up above. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.